This is J.D. Cole, The Board Baker, and on today's episode, I have something that everyone loves, macarons. We're going to make them with a chocolate ganache with rum chata and a buttercream filling. You can find those recipes below, and I can't wait to get started. Let's go. All right, to start the macarons, what we want to do is go ahead and add 205 grams of your powdered sugar into the uh, blender or food processor, whatever you have. And also add the 190 grams of your almond flour into the food processor or blender. Now what we're trying to do is eliminate uh, any kind of big chunks of almonds in there and just kind of give it a good mix before we sift it. All right, let's go ahead and put the top on. I'm just using a Ninja blender and we're gonna pulse this for you know 10, maybe 15 depending on the mix. Uh, you don't want to over pulse it as you don't want the almonds to release their oils quite yet. Right, that should just about do it. I pulsed it for 13 times but yours may vary just depending. All right, now that we have that mixed, let's go ahead and sift it. Eliminate any kind of nuggets or big chunks that we have there. And that noise that you heard is I preheated my oven for 350 degrees. That's what these will cook at uh, for about 12 to 15 minutes. And as you can see, we can add some little nuggets in there that we don't want to ruin the landscape of our macarons. All right, now that we have that sift through, it should be a nice powdery form. And the 144 grams of egg whites that we had, we split up into two uh, batches. So we're gonna add 72 grams here. And you're just gonna mix that in. And you want to make it a paste form. So just keep going. And just before we get it done, what we want to do is, if you want food coloring added, uh, now is the proper time to go ahead and add that. I'm going to choose teal as it's one of my friend's uh, birthday and this is one of her favorite colors. So we're just going to add a little dot there. And then we're just going to mix that in. If it's not quite the color you want to see, uh, it will start off dark. We will have more ingredients added on later, so it'll brighten it up just a, a little bit there. But have fun with it. Choose any color you want, you know, birthdays, holidays. It doesn't matter. They all taste wonderful. looking beautiful. Make sure you get all that mixture. Now this will give your arms a workout. It is quite an arm strenuous exercise. But it would all be worth it at the end. I promise. And 
And once that food coloring is mixed in very well, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next step. Right, just go ahead and add the sugar in. And the water in. All right, so we're going to bring this up to 116 degrees to create a nice syrup. As it hits around 1, 109, 110, we're going to start the egg whites. All right, as you can see, it's 109, and now it's 110. Let's go ahead and get the egg whites wet ready. So the remainder of that 72 grams of egg whites, let's go ahead and start that up. Make sure to put it on the side so as it runs down, it doesn't get caught in just to the whisk. Alright, well as it cools down, it's actually cooking it as well, so this is called the Italian meringue. This seems to be the most stable meringue out there for macarons. So we definitely want to see those frosty peaks. This is um, pretty perfect here as far as the mixture. I mixed it for about five to six minutes there. And so once that's done, let's go ahead and remove that. And we're going to add this into our, our almond flour and powder sugar mixture. Alright, so we're going to add half of it in right now, and we're going to start folding it. And I saw this fold online, and I think it's a pretty good fold here. So just go around the edges and just cut through the middle every once in a while, and it'll start being able to fold in. Now what you want to be careful of is not knocking all that air that you just put into your meringue. And as you can see, that color is starting to fade a little bit. It'll be more of a teal pastel, pastel teal. All right, let's go ahead and add the rest of the mixture there. Same thing until it's mixed very well. So at the end, the consistency you want are ribbons that kind of stay there for, you know, three, four seconds before they fall back in. I'll show you what I mean once we get to that point. As you can see right now, it's not really quite ready. We're almost there though. So what you want to see is the ribboning not melting right back into the mix. Kind of just sits there for a few seconds before it blends back in. And that should be good. We're going to go ahead and put this in a pipe bag and start piping. This is the tip I'm using. It's a circular tip. Uh, this is what we're going to be piping the macarons with. If you watch my other video, uh, how to make buttercream, uh, I showed a quick tip on how to put the mixtures into the piping bags. Um, if it's a liquidy mixture or if you know you don't have someone there to help. Um, essentially all you want to do is fold this end up, put the bag down there, fold it over. Make sure you have enough room for the expansion. Up it in. And pour. Alright, so I got these two silicone mats that uh, I actually picked up on Amazon. Uh, they have the templates for the macarons already there, uh, but if you don't have that or um, you got a printer and some parchment paper, you can print out the templates online. And so we're just going to pipe these out. Okay, so now that we have them piped on here, um, as you see, you want to try to hold them as vertical as possible. Uh, that way you have a nice mixture. Of course, you know, if you mess up, it happens. Um, 
just you could clean it up at the end or you could just let it cook like that now before these start to get the skin on them what we want is to go ahead and pop the air bubbles so just hit it on the counter uh, you know three four times all right so we're going to let these go ahead and get the skin on them for about 30 minutes uh, Right now, uh, if it's to the touch, see how it's still on your finger? When you know it's ready is when you can touch it and you don't get any of the mixture on your finger. All right, so I let them bake for about 13 minutes. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull them out of the oven. What we wanna see are the feet down at the bottom. Of them. I'll show you. All right, so I let them bake for about 13 minutes. Let's go ahead and take them out, take a look at them. All right, as you can see, pulled them out, and there's a couple of cracks, um, which tells me that I either one left air bubbles in there, and uh, they caused them to rise prematurely, or two, I didn't let the skin uh, form correctly. But there are several that look very nice, and so we're gonna let these cool for about 30 minutes, and once they do, we'll go ahead and pull them off there and start filling them. All right, so we went ahead and let them cool, and they should be fairly easy to flip over. And what we want to see is the bottom uh, sort of flat. That way it's nice and easy to put on the filling. Let's go ahead and flip some of these over. Now, I will show you that not everyone's perfect. So uh, even if you know some stick to the parchment paper or to your silicone mat, you can still use them. Uh, they're still gonna taste just fine. So we're we'll going to flip these over. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start piping. So what I have here is a chocolate ganache uh, with rum chata mixed in with it. Um, if you want the recipe for that, go ahead and uh, click on the link down here. And I will uh, show you how to make this wonderful, easy to make chocolate ganache. And you'll just continue doing that until you fill half of them up so you can flip the other half. All right, so I'm gonna fill the other half with buttercream filling. So we'll go ahead and pipe our buttercream. Again, uh, if you click on the link below, I'll show you how to make this perfect buttercream icing, filling, whatever you decide on it. All right, now that we've got those filled, uh, you just want to find light size sizes, just in case, you know, you didn't, like, if you're like me, they're not all perfect, so we'll just go ahead and pop those on. And you will just do that until you're finished. There you have it. So this recipe makes about 24 or so macarons. And if you want to share these with friends and family, I'm sure they will love it. But if you don't, I understand. But until then, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, enjoy your desserts.